Hello everyone, today we are going to start a new course which is called evaluation of textile material. So, the evaluation of textile material here will mainly deal with the physical testing of textile material. Textile material in the form of fiber, yarn, fabric also we will discuss the intermediate material like sliver, roving. So, in today's discussion we will discuss the introduction to the course, overall introduction. Okay. Now, basic outline of today's discussion is that first we will try to understand the need for testing of textile material. Why do we want to test textile material? Then we will discuss the importance of standardization. Standard test method is extremely important and we will discuss various standards available for testing textile material and also we will discuss that what are the effects we will get if we do not follow any standard method. Next, so different uh, standards for textile uh, testing. After that, we will discuss different terms related to sample related to testing, different standard definitions we will discuss and at last we will give the total overview of entire course. So, what are we going to discuss in this course that we will give the overview before we start actual course. So, first question is that why do we test textile material? What is the importance? So, first is that we have to check the quality of the material and suitability of the raw material for particular application. For example, suppose we want to produce a particular yarn and for that we need a raw material like fiber say cotton. So, for particular yarn to achieve a particular quality of yarn, particular strength of yarn we need to know the strength of fiber diameter of fiber, length of fiber. So, if we want to know, so how do we know? We have to check. So, that is why we have to test the material. So, whether the raw material is suitable for a particular application that we have to decide. So, we have various raw materials available, different quality of raw materials available and a particular quality is suitable to have particular yarn. So, similarly for yarn we have different types of yarns. So, we need to know the characteristics of yarn to have best quality fabric. Next objective is that to monitor the production process like we are trying to manufacture a particular end product say yarn okay. and the yarn our targeted strength targeted uniformity is there and to achieve that strength or uniformity we have to know the intermediate product also like this is yarn. So, to produce this yarn we have to go through different intermediate process. So, like this is the raw fiber say raw cotton fiber. So, this fi from this fiber we have to convert this 
raw fiber to a continuous strand this is called sliver and from this sliver in next stage we have to form a finer continuous strand which is known as roving. So, to monitor this total entire production process to achieve particular yarn we have to test the material in between also. If we do not have better quality sliver or roving we cannot get the required quality of yarn. So, to monitor the production process we have to test at each and every stage. Next objective is that the process development. Suppose a particular process let us say for example, blow room a blow room it has been observed that it is breaking the fiber a large amount of fiber breakage is taking place. So, what do you do? So, fiber breakage means reduction in length of the fiber. So, what do you do? We have to test the fiber length before blow room process and if we know the certain length before blow room and then after blow room process and we can see the change percentage reduction in fiber length in that way if it is beyond the acceptable limit then what do you do we have to change the setting of the blow room or we have to change the speed of the blow room. So, not only in the blow room for many other application like we want to impart certain twist in the yarn and if we do not test the twist then we cannot actually set the machine. So, for process development for any process development we need to test the material and then assessment of final product where the quality is acceptable or not. So, whether the quality is acceptable or not that assessment we have to know. Suppose our yarn after production of yarn, yarn goes to the weaving department the weaving the it is a raw material for weaving. So, and the weaving needs particular quality set quality. So, in that the, that is the final product of the spinning, but the raw material for weaving. So, that quality checking we have to do. So, that for that we need to test the material. Another objective is that to investigate the faulty machine. Suppose a particular machine is generating fault like a thick and thin places in ring frame. So, if we do not test the evenness of the yarn, so we cannot identify the faulty location. So, if we test the material and that is called root cause analysis. So, analysis of customer complaint suppose a particular customer has actually given send us a complaint that the yarn is highly non uniform it has got too much thick and thin places or the yarn is poor in quality in terms of strength. So, for that we have to first test the material thorough testing of the material is required to identify the source of fault. If we cannot identify the source of fault then the total the machine will keep on generating the fault keep on producing the faulty material. So, that the, the industry cannot survive. So, for that we need to test the material. Next is the product development and research for any product development for any research we have to test. So, we must understand the testing. Okay. So, so, suppose we want to produce a new fabric new material. So, we must test the material and last is that 
the specification testing. Our customer they give some specification. Suppose spinning mill is trying to sell its product to a particular customer abroad. So, what the customer gives, customer gives the specification. This is the uniformity rate, the uniformity u percent, this is the strength, this is the hairiness, all these parameters they give. And you have to match these parameters. How do we match? For that, we need to test. So, all these are the very important aspects of textile material and for that we have to test, we have we should know the characteristics of the material. So, after knowing the requirement of testing, then we must know the need for standardization. Why do you need to standardize the testing? Can we test material, any material at any environment, at any condition? that will result as the wide variation in result. For a particular material, it will give wide variation. So, the lack of reproducibility in test result may be due to first is the variation in the material. So, particularly text textile material, it is it is variable in nature in terms of diameter in terms of strength, in terms of cross sectional shape, it is totally variable. So, for that if we test the material under strictly standardized condition, then we will achieve the reproducible result. So, variation in material we can minimize by proper sampling. So, if we can sample, we will discuss detail the sampling processes, the may be random sampling, maybe any other types of sampling that we will discuss in detail. So, proper sampling if we can do, then we can little bit minimize the variation of material and use of suitable statistical method to analyze the test result. Like T test, significance test. So, we can actually come to know whether the material is actually variable or not. That these things we can, we are able to uh, understand this through the statistical method. Next is that variation due to test method. So, during testing the result can change for same material, if we do not test the material under standardized condition, we will land up with totally different test result. This variation in test result are due to their various factors. First is that due to the operator, the person who is testing. Suppose, he is not taking care, proper care in sample mounting jaw he is not fixing, there is a jaw slippage, he is not following the test method, test procedure, okay. he is not able to set the machine at proper speed, proper gauge length. So, all this reason that uh, due to operators carelessness we will land up with the uh, different test result. Next is that proper size of the specimen. So, if we do not set the proper size, then we will have different test result. Test result for a same material will land up with different test result. Like one example is that the gauge length, gauge length of yarn. So, this yarn if we test with a smaller gauge length, we will get a particular strength value, but if we test with a longer gauge length the test result will be totally different. All these details we will discuss, but the thing is that here the specimen size actually affect the result widely. The material is same, same yarn, 
but we will land up with different result. We are using the same testing instrument, same speed, same environment only by changing the size of the specimen our test result is changing. Third is that atmospheric condition. In textile material, most of the textile materials are hygroscopic in nature and the characteristics of the textile material affects too much on atmospheric condition, particularly the relative humidity. So, the atmospheric condition has to be perfect, the specified it, will, it should be standardized. So, standard atmospheric condition must be there, otherwise it will land up with different result. For cotton, if we increase the relative humidity, the strength of cotton will increase, but on the other hand for viscous, if we increase the relative humidity, the strength of viscous will decrease. So, to counteract this problem, we have to set the specific relative humidity and temperature that is known as the standard atmospheric condition. Type of test equipment, suppose if we test a fiber for strength in a single fiber test method or in bundle mode, bundle fiber test, the test result will change. So, type of test equipment there are various types of equipments for a particular parameter. For strength testing of yarn, we will have different, uh, different types of equipment like single yarn test, single yarn strength we can test in using instron or any other instrument. Also we can test at very high speed which is known as tensor rapid or tensor jet. So, if we see if we compare the result, this results will be entirely different for a particular type of raw material. So, for any material like for uh, even for other parameters like uh, uh, your evenness, for evenness also if we test the evenness in terms of say capacitance method, in capacitance method we will get one particular type of evenness, but if we test in photoelectric method, then the evenness value will be totally different. So, type of test equipment or principle of testing also affect the test result and test condition as we have already mentioned speed, temperature also pressure affect the test result. Like we want to test the thickness of fabric. So, to test the thickness of fabric, we must specify the pressure otherwise because textile material is compressible in nature. So, for any standard test method to test the pressure uh, thickness, pressure is actually specified. So, if we do not follow this specified condition, we will land up with totally different result. So, to minimize all these variations so, we have discussed all the uh, variation, all the different types of variation, all the causes of variation and to minimize this variation, standard test methods are followed. So, worldwide there are various standards, in different countries they have various standards, but they have specific format. Most of the uh, test methods they follow the specific formats. Like in India, we follow BIS standard, a Bureau of Indian Standard. Okay. So, in India we follow BIS standard, in Britain we follow BS standard, British standard, America ASTM standard, Germany DIN standard. So, different countries they have different standards, but overall internationally ISO standard is actually established and it is being followed across the country. So, international organization for standardization. So, 
all these standards they have specific formats and this format they tell detail about the testing and they are they are numbered for a particular test particular characteristics they have different number like ASTM they have for yarn they have different uh, series of numbers for fabric they have different series of number. So, same parameter when we are we are refer BIS standard it will have different uh, different actual number, okay. but overall if you see the standards are very close to each other okay. and they have almost similar format. The, if we see the total format, what are the information? What is the information they are in available in the standard? If we see, so general format and guidelines of this, all these standards, any standards, first it is, it will be scope of the testing. It is given scope. There it is like scope of testing is the tensile testing of yarn. That is the scope and their total scope of this method, particular method is described. What type of yarn, what are the uh, characteristics required, everything is given there. Okay. Next is that uh, reference document, what are the documents you have to refer to actually test the material, to uh, how to test the material. So, the, there are different uh, reference document it is given there, then different terminologies. So, for testing you must know the terminologies, different terminologies you have to know. Okay. So, uh, like uh, what is the strength, what is elongation, the different terminology related to that particular testing is given. Then broad overall summary of the test method in short it is given. So, that if you do not want to read in detail, so you just go through that summary you can test. Okay. You do not need to go to detailed uh, test method there, overall summary you can just come to know what are the what are the test methods as uh, has been described there. Next is the significance and use of that test. Okay. So, what are the significance of the why do you want to test that particular characteristics. So, that significance and what are the uses of this it is given there then apparatus. Apparatus is mentioned, particular company will not be mentioned, but what is the what are the manufacturer will not be mentioned, but overall apparatus is mentioned, because as we have already explained that the test result varies with the apparatus. Okay. So, the apparatus it is a overall broad outline of the apparatus will be given and that all this apparatus the has to actually follow these guidelines. So, then only you will get the repeatable result. So, the standard test methods idea is to that that wherever you test if the material is same you must get the same result and it is not that that the test testing lab all the testing lab will have the same apparatus it, it cannot have they will have to have diff from different manufacturer, but this instrument they have to follow that particular test method. They will actually the instrument manufacturer will give will tell that this instrument follows this 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 standard. Okay, ASTM, ASTM this standard, uh, um, ISO this standard that they will give. Okay, so that particular apparatus you have to follow. Then only you will get the result. Then comes how to sample. So, for a particular material, particular type of test, you have to follow strict sampling method. So, detailed sampling process we will discuss, but there you, they will give you the strict sampling method because other if you do not follow the proper sampling method, our test result will be totally different. Okay. Next is that how to condition. So, we cannot start testing immediately after getting the material. No, we have to condition the material, and there is a specific conditioning temperature, 
humidity or time is there. So, that conditioning we have to follow strictly. Then comes the procedure in detail. So, earlier we have discussed that it is a summary of the test method, then it is a procedure, detailed procedure. So, person who does not know the test method, who is doing for the first time, if he reads the procedure, he will just follow one by step by step, then he will be able to test the material. Because the different person, they are testing at different lab, okay, same material. Ultimately, the ultimate goal is that the from two lab, two different person, they are testing, but their test result should be exactly same. That is the idea. So, they have to follow the this uh, procedure strictly line by line, word by word. Then only we can reproduce the result and then how to calculate. We cannot calculate the result as per our own wish. We have to follow their own calculation. Like if you want to know the mean, how many readings are required and all these details are given. Okay? Then report, report should be at a particular format. The, the format is given, so that format you have to fill the report. So, ultimately if we follow all these steps, so we must reach, we must uh, get the same result. So, the standard, uh, standard method, standard test methods, the idea is to have that the same material should give the same result. Okay? Otherwise, if we do not follow, if we actually deviate little bit, then we will have totally, we will land up with total uh, different result and then we cannot compare. And that is why for any test, the requirement is that we must write this is as per this test method. Okay? Now, we will see different standard terms related to testing. We must know these terms for actually after testing, we actually we should correlate with these terms. So, before we start testing, we must know the terms. The first term is that quality. If we ask that what is quality? So, normally uh, in the at the back of the mind, we know that the quality means it should be based in uh, uh, behavior, based in characteristics. Actually, that is not the quality. Quality as per ISO, it is stated that ensemble of properties and characteristics of a product or a service. Quality of product can be quality of also service, which confer on it the capacity to satisfy the expressed or implicit requirements. That means, the expressed requirement means I need one yarn say I am giving uh, the example of yarn of strength say 10, 10 gram per tex this is the strength required. Now, if I am producing a yarn, so my requirement is 10, our customer they are paying for 10 gram per tex. Suppose I am producing a yarn of say 20 gram per tex, double that. So, should I be happy? It is not that, it is actually I am not actually producing the quality. Quality does not mean that you have to produce the best quality, it is a requirement. So, our requirement is that expressed requirement is that it is the 10 gram per tex. If I am producing say 9 gram per tex, I am not producing the quality. But if I am producing just 10 or just little bit above 10, then I am producing the quality, because I am meeting the 
expressed or implicit requirement that is the requirement. So, that characteristics of the product that is the requirement okay? and the capacity to satisfy the requirement that means, if I am producing 10 that means, it is satisfying the requirement. If I am producing the strength as of 20 it is also satisfying the quality, but quality at certain cost extra cost my buyer he is not going to give me extra money for extra strength. Okay. That 20 gram per text is uh, actually it is for those customer who needs that one. Okay. So, that is called suitable for use or fitness for use that is the quality. So, in one word if you try to say the what is quality it is a suitable for use, okay. it is not more than that or less than that. Next is that testing, we are going to discuss all about testing of textile material, evaluation of textile material, but we must know what is testing, what is the term testing called. So, it is a means of determining the capability of an item to meet the specified requirement. Just try to understand that the capability of an item to meet the specified requirement. So, to determine, so I want to determine whether this yarn will be able to achieve 10 gram per takes strength. Okay. That is our requirement. So, I, I want to determine the capability of this yarn. So, how to determine the capability of yarn that, that determination is known as testing. So, how to determine the by a set of physical, chemical, environmental or operating action and condition. Means, if I want to know the capability of this yarn whether it is a 10 gram per text or not I have to give the uh, some physical action on this, I have to pull the yarn, okay? I have to extend the yarn, I have to pull, apply force uh, to the yarn, these are the physical characteristics what is chemical? Suppose, I want to know the blend percent, for blend percent I want to calculate the blend percent by dissolving. So, for that chemical activity is required, sometime we need to know the environmental activity. Suppose, I want to test the change in color with the sun light fastness. So, particular environmental condition I have to expose the material. So, if we see the operating action, so we want to change the speed or any other thing. So, testing is that basically to determine the capability of the material, whether the material is actually satisfying the required characteristics by subjecting certain physical, chemical or environmental condition. So, that is the overall testing. Okay. Next term is that inspection, testing is that it is a very, very specific I am testing the yarn for strength, but inspection is overall it is a area it is a volume is much bigger, okay. it is a total gamut is much bigger like it is a activity such as measuring, examining, testing, testing is one of that, okay. but I am, I am trying to examine. So, 10 different lot, okay. I am inspecting. So, inspection is I am testing the, okay. I am telling okay, you would uh, get the strength of this yarn. Okay. Now, after that I am whether this bobbin shape is okay or not, whether there is any damage 
is there or not. Okay. So, all these things are taken together, it is called inspection. And I am trying to compare whether this yarn is better than this yarn or not. So, comparison. So, testing is one small aspect, but inspection is overall. Okay. So, the activity such as measuring, examining, testing one or more characteristics of a product at a time. Suppose I want to know the total overall characteristics, I want to inspect, okay, this yarn is total, okay, it is strong, this yarn is, okay, there are very, very, uh, it is dirty, it is not clean, there are foreign matters. So, this, all this overall, one or more characteristics we try to evaluate in one go through inspection okay. and comparing this with the specified requirement to determine the comp, uh, conformability. Whether this yarn conforms the total uh, requirement, the inspection will tell us. Even in bracket study in the ring frame, it is not testing. So, it is not uh, it necessary all the component has to be there. Even say examining, I am examining that whether the and counting the number of end breakages okay, per hour in a particular ring frame. And I am comparing with the other ring frame or I am comparing with the standard. So, it is called inspection. Like we, we have seen that uh, we know that uh, the buying house, they come to the industry, garment industry, they inspect they try to test, they try to take a sample randomly, they open the packet and try to see whether and measure the dimension, it is inspection. Okay. So, fabric inspection. So, there are different types of inspection. The advantage of inspection is that it is a quicker, it is a easy, quicker method to know overall characteristics. Next is the term quality control it is a very commonly used term quality control. It is actually function of inspection, it is a function of inspection, testing everything. Okay. The operational technique and activities used to fulfill the requirement of quality. So, we have the required quality, we know this is the quality we have to achieve. Like let me give uh, take the earlier example. Our quality is that 10 gram per text, this is the quality achieved. So, to achieve this quality, to fulfill this requirement, we have to test the material, we have to inspect the material it at every stages and that is called quality control. We must know to have this yarn we have we need this much waste percentage, this much stress percentage, this is the length. So, all these things this is a function of say inspection, testing or different uh, aspects to achieve a required quality. Okay. And next term is that it is called statistical quality control. One is quality control and statistical quality control only difference is that when we use statistics in quality control, it is called statistical quality control. Like to use, so application of statistical technique for quality control, like we want to know mean, we are we measure mean. So, that is statistical quality control, we are achieving this. We want to know variability of the material, how much variation is there, standard deviation, coefficient of variation we want to know whether this difference is significant or not. So, we do significance test, T test, F test. So, this all these things are under statistical quality control and next is that quality assurance. So, quality control we know that then quality assurance, quality assurance is something broader. It is not, it does not talk about the material only it talks about the total, it, it takes care of human resource, take care, takes care of time management. Okay. 
So, motion study, time study, everything. Its material is material characteristics is one of them. It is a total system and just to assure the quality. Okay. So, all those planned or systematic action necessary to provide adequate confidence. So, the, comp the industry should have sufficient confidence that whatever I am producing, whatever we are producing, it is a particular, it, it will give us, lead us to a particular quality. That much confidence has to have. So, how do we get that confidence? And that a product or service will satisfy the given requirement for quality. So, again I am taking the same example. This is our requirement 10 gram per tax. Okay. And quality control we have achieved. Okay, oh, this is a by testing we have achieved. But how do we ensure? How do the management know that? Okay, my industry, my this industry, particular industry will always produce that type of quality. That's the adequate confidence has to be there. For that, we need to have systematic plan. So how do you have systematic plan? So, this planned activity if we do, then we will be able to achieve the quality. So, these are the systematic achievement. Few examples are there like control of vendors for supply of raw material. This is particular quality I want to achieve and I cannot go to market and take randomly from different vendor, because I do not have that much confidence. Based on our previous experience, we have identified few vendors, two, three vendors okay, who have already supplied consistent quality, consistent quality of raw material. Okay. That vendor identification is very important. So, first thing is we have to control the vendor who supplies the raw materials, chemicals and all these things. And if we know that this particular vendor will give me a consistent quality of raw material, consistent quality of chemical, then we are sure that okay, I am getting raw material for a particular yard or particular end product. Next is that proper setting of machine. For that proper setting, proper maintenance schedule has to be there. So, this it is actually for like ISO 9000 or different types of quality assurance. There it is a written that this is the machine setting for this particular yarn, this particular fiber, this is the roller pressure has to be there. It is written and that the lab uh, that is supervisor, that floor level supervisor, they have to follow this thing. They do not have to do any other thing, only has to they have to follow this particular uh, setting. Okay. You have to follow particular environmental condition. So, it is specified for say spinning shed, we need for a cotton, we need particular environment particular relative humidity. So, for cotton we need different relative humidity, for polyester it is a different relative humidity, otherwise the machine running will get affected. Next is the manpower training, continuous manpower training has to be there, human resource development has to be there, otherwise they will not be able to produce the required quality of the product that confidence has to, has to uh, will not be there okay. and proper time management. So, time management is very important. Suppose my buyer he wants a material up after one month a particular time okay. and if I am not able to supply that material within that specified time that means, the non conformity will, will be there and that, that I am not actually supplying the quality product. 
quality here quality assurance does not mean the quality of material quality of service will also there. Okay. Next is the quality management, quality management is that you understand your quality, okay, you planned your quality then you have to manage that quality you have to maintain that quality and after that you have to go for improvement of the quality. You cannot stick to that quality today you are producing quality grade D tomorrow you have to produce grade C then grade B continuous improvement has to be there that is. So, quality management does not aim to assure best quality always. So, if I am producing D grade yarn I will tell this industry produ produces D grade yarn because for D grade yarn D grade quality you will have different product different buyers will be there. So, that for that day it is not always target the best quality by more general definition, but rather to ensure that the an organization or product is consistent. If I am producing B grade yarn B grade quality it is consistent. So, the I am known for that and I will have that type of buyer. Okay. So, it has got four components as I have mentioned first is you have to plan your quality then quality control quality assurance and last is that quality improvement. So, today I am producing B grade quality. So, tomorrow I will have target I will target to have achieve the A grade target, but till then till that time I have to be satisfied with that I will tell this is my quality I am not targeting the best quality because for different quality you have different buyers okay, different users are there. Now, we have mentioned that, uh, that uh, for standard testing for to get the standard test result we need to have standard testing atmosphere. So, standard atmosphere is that in which the physical test of textile material is performed. So, as textile materials are most of the materials as I have mentioned that is hygroscopic in nature and they are directly affected by the humidity and temperature of environment. So, we must know and we must maintain the relative humidity and the temperature. So, in cold country the standard there are two different standards we follow. In cold country the standard is the relative humidity 65 plus minus 2 percent and standard temperature is 20 plus minus 2 degree Celsius this is the cold country and in uh, tropical country or subtropical country it is a relative humidity is same, but temperature is 27 plus minus 2 degree Celsius. So, that you do not have to go for too much air conditioning. Okay. So, that is the reason and we, we must actually mention in any test result we must mention that this is tested under this condition. Okay. Because if we test a cotton say under say 100 percent relative humidity and we are telling okay, this yarn is giving very good result then we are misleading. So, we because the particular you have and you have shipped the material you have, you have actually uh, sold the material, okay. but when your customer will test in under standard condition then he will land up with lower value. So, we have to st follow standard test method and we must mention that this is the standard. Now, we will keep the overview of the course, the course overview that means, what we are going to discuss in the total entire course. Okay. First we will start with the sampling, so sampling methods and sample size we will start with the different sampling method and different uh, sample size to achieve certain confidence level. Okay. So, in that we will discuss 
the meaning of sampling, what is sampling. So, all these things we will discuss here. Next is that we will discuss the aim of sampling, why do you need to sample the material, why do not you test the total material. So, sampling aim of sampling we will discuss there. After that the different factors which govern the sampling method. So, we do not follow the same sampling method for say uh, fiber or if you want to sample the fabric the we have to follow the different sampling method. So, uh, there are various factors which govern the sampling method this we will discuss in this part. Then there are different types of sampling statistical sampling, non statistical sampling. So, within statistical sampling there are four different types of sampling. So, all this uh, sampling techniques we will discuss, methods we will discuss with example. So, here I will give all the example related to textile materials okay. and uh, different terms commonly used for sampling. So, bulk sample, consignment, lab sample. So, this uh, terms we will discuss are the meaning of these uh, terms. So, we must know these terms and sampling stages of textile material at diff which stage different stages we uh, do uh, sample. So, different stage like fiber at the stage of fiber at the stage of bale. So, fiber testing also we can do at different stages from bale we have, uh, we have we can sample from sliver we can sample even from say carding machine we can sample. So, but their techniques will be different. So, this uh, we will uh, discuss uh, different sampling techniques. Then one concept is critical difference is there, uh, concept of critical difference we will discuss here. Then fiber sampling from bulk. So, we have we can as we have mentioned that uh, different type of sampling. So, from bulk from say bale we can sample. So, how to sample uh, the fibers from the bulk or from bale this uh, sampling techniques we will discuss. Then uh, fiber sampling from tuft or sliver or roving like this is sliver. If I want to sample from the sliver it will be totally different character than if you if I want to sample from the loose. So, because in sliver fibers are aligned and if we try to sample from the surface from this point or from the end the ultimate result will be totally different. This I will discuss here in detail. Okay. Then we will discuss the yarn sampling, yarn sampling from fabric, yarn sampling from bobbin, how to sample the yarn, even the from the cone, how to sample. So, we will discuss. Then we will discuss the sampling of fiber fabric. So, fabric sampling we will also discuss. So, uh, all this sampling techniques we will discuss here and fabric sampling is we will see that entirely different from, from the let us say yarn sampling or fiber sampling. Then we will discuss the how to determine the sample size say for yarn we want to test the strength. Okay. So, how many yarn samples do I take 10, 20, 100. So, there are statistical techniques to know the sample size. So, we will discuss in detail the number of sample number of and, and what is the sample size this we will discuss here with the with the numericals and then we will discuss the test of significance. Suppose our we are sampling and the whether the sample is actually different from the population that significance test will, will be there. Suppose we have changed the certain parameter by sampling technique we should be able to tell with certain confidence that this difference is significant or this difference is not significant that testing will do, we will do different numericals on this and also 
a control chart which is very important for day to day meal practice okay where you have to take actual action or not okay and then we'll discuss a detail about the practical statistical based sampling okay practical statistics we have to say based on the sampling so we'll give various example and various uh, numerical we will do based on the sampling okay and uh, we will come to know we will see the uh, t test f test sampling of um, variation of uh, significance uh, variation in mean significant uh, variation in dispersion or we have to we can test the uh, various uh, parameters we will uh, for um, uh, statistical technique we will discuss okay next we will we will continue these things the course overview in next class till then thank you <laughs>